Hi, this is Chef Ranveer Brar. Let's explore India in its purest form through its food. Join me as I celebrate India in 21 recipes. The recipe that I've chosen today comes from a state that I'm truly, truly in love with. A state that not only represents progressiveness, it also represents a culture that's crazy about its food. <laughs> the recipe for today is um, fish paturi. Classically banana leaf wrapped steamed fish from Bengal. You know, there's a saying in Bengal which is Macher Bhater Bangali, which means that you cannot be a Bengali without your true love for uh, fish and rice. And it's not too different in Japan, let me tell you that. <laughs> the fish in question today is Rui Mach or Rohu. Now what Rohu and Katla are, these two fish are uh, the year-long staples of Bengal. Fish that are super special are Baramundi in English, but you'd call it Kolkata Bekti or Bhetki. And the Queen of Bengal, the other fish which is Ilish or Hilsa. There's nothing better like a nice sweet water fish enveloped in a little bit of mustard, coconut, yogurt marination, steamed to perfection. Trust me on that. You know, there are the usual culprits, the way we know how to look at the freshness of a fish. Press the eyes down, press the skin down. Look for jumpiness in the eye, look for jumpiness in the skin. Uh, look for the red gills. Another way to look for it is, you know, there are these blood lines on a fish on the sides and in the center. You see these? And these blood lines need to be as red as possible for the fish to be fresh. So just one slice into the fish and the color of the blood line tells you both the age, the time of catching the fish and how fresh it is. Well, I've been pulling out knife after knife from my companion in this 21 recipe journey. Let me properly introduce the Victorinox Swiss Modern Walnut Handle Knife Collection. This is a beautiful six knife block. And you know what I really love about it? The fact that all these walnut wood handles are unique. They will age at their pace. They will become more and more and more beautiful, comfortable and personalized with time. I thought I'd introduce you because you're going to see me and my block for a really long time. Salt. Across India, if there's one unifying factor mostly on how to treat fish, then the first thing that goes on any fish marination would be turmeric and salt. Now let's introduce you to another concept that's very typical to Bengal and Urissa, which is the concept of bata. Bata or what you'd compare to a pesto or a raw paste. Right? One of the most common batas is the shorshe bata or the mustard pesto if you'd like to call it that. I'm going to mix a little bit of soaked yellow and soaked red mustard. 30% red mustard and 70% yellow mustard. I'm going to put one green chili. Chili, mustard and poppy seeds are the most common ingredients which are used for making bata. Salt and mustard oil, again, really, very important. So this is a classic shorshe bata. Hmm? Now we're gonna turn this into a marination for our fish, which means we're gonna add a few more ingredients. We're gonna add ginger. So this is a good enough piece. If the ginger is young and tender, you don't need to peel it. But if it is slightly older, you can. Let's chop it with our santoku once again. Do you see the advantage now? I can use it to chop it, to cut my fish, to cut ginger, because it's both a knife and a cleaver. Now I'm gonna add some coconut to it. If you wanna add a little bit of water, just a tad bit of water, that's okay. You could drop in a cube of ice for fine grinding. So this would classically go on like a stone mortar and pestle where you grind it gradually and take your time with it. Or in modern times, it could go into a blender and 
I'm going to do that. Now, if you have a shorshe bata and you like taste a quarter teaspoon of it, if tears don't run down your eyes, then there's something wrong. That's how pungent and nice and beautiful it's supposed to be. I'm not going to try that. I can assure you that this is pungent enough. This is another very Bangla thing. To mix yogurt and fish together, whether it's in a marination or just as doi match, very Bangla. Now let's cut some lemon with our 15 centimeter office knife. Just a little bit of lemon juice. If the yogurt is not sour, then a little bit of lemon juice. Remember there's salt in the marination, so don't overdo your salt. A little bit of mustard oil because mustard oil is always good. Now what I'm showing you is a very basic fish paturi. Uh, there are different kinds of paturi there's done. There's one lau patha elish, which is a paturi done inside uh, gourd leaves or pumpkin leaves. There is also uh, a pumpkin flower paturi in which the fish is stuffed inside pumpkin flowers and steamed. So, uh, kumro pool paturi. So, um, it is not just a very western phenomenon to do a fish on papiot or a, uh, or a zucchini flower fritter. It's been in India for a while, in Bengal for more than two centuries, if I'm not wrong. So, we're going to use banana leaf today for our paturi, all right? If the banana leaf is old and it's not as delicate, here's a quick trick. Just on low heat, just slightly heat up your banana leaf and it'll become flexible and nice and delicate. Please be generous. Please be generous with the marination. And if you like it spicy, it's probably a good idea here to also uh, add a little bit of green chili inside before you fold it, right? The reason I'm cutting my banana stem with ease with my Victorinox knives is because they're made of martensitic steel. And uh, the beauty of that steel is, one, it's recycled. Two, it's flexible and hard at the same time because of the composition and the heat treatment. I'm just gonna make my thread flexible the same way I made my leaves flexible. Nice. Now the more important part is not to seal it perfectly, but to marinate it perfectly. The salt turmeric marination, that marination you can leave your fish for like 15 minutes. The second marination, just marinate it, wrap it and steam it, don't waste time because there's a lot of acid in it. There's lemon juice, there's uh, lactic acid from the yogurt and that will tenderize the fish too much and you don't want that. You want the texture of the fish in place. So in anything that is sour, do not leave your fish for a long time unless you're making a ceviche. All right, so while the fish is steaming, I thought I'll take 30 seconds and talk to you about the blade of the knife. Very important aspect of the knife is the blade. Now, what constitutes a blade? Point, tip, belly, cutting edge, and the spine. Now, the reason you see all this in a knife is because when you're cutting with a knife, the knife has to rock on the belly for you to use the point and the tip effectively and for you to cut with the edge. However, a lot of times you don't need to rock the knife. You just need to chop, you need to lift it up and down, like in this case, and that's when you use the Santoku blade, or the blade that really doesn't have a big belly. So you don't really need to rock it, but you can lift it and cut it. And the broad blade in this allows for chopping bigger vegetables, meats, and the fish that we cut today. So always understand that a belly in a knife is good, but then you should know what to do with that belly, whether you want to rock on it or you just want to chop with it. It's time to visit Bengal.
And the reason I know it's done is because it has been 10 to 12 minutes, that's one. And the second bit is if I push it down, it comes back up. Or if you observe minutely, you will see clear water inside the leaves. Now clear water means the fish is cooked. Cloudy water means wait for a bit. Anyways, you should take out the fish from the steam when it's 90% cooked because scientifically food cooks in its own residual heat as well. You know the beauty of this technique of wrapping fish in banana leaf is that it's not just from Bengal. You know, uh, whether you have mean polichetto in Kerala or whether you have wrapped fishes of Nagaland or you have patrani machi of Gujarat, it represents the bigger idea of the food of India. And that's why we've chosen these 21 recipes because they just don't represent the recipe. They represent Indian food in its purest form. All right, I'm ready for plating. And now I'm doing something that you don't normally need to do. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a modern touch. So I have mustard oil. I'm going to take some coconut bits. And I have the punch foran or the Bangla 5 spice that I'm going to temper the mustard oil with. Coconut bits. Just going to drop in a kacho longko or a green chili. Shut off the gas and we're done. Finish it with lemon juice. So the idea is to have a little bit of an emulsion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this beautiful, beautiful dish from a beautiful, beautiful state with this beautiful rice called Gobindabhog. And this is optional, but if you're crazy about mustard like me, then you should definitely make this small dressing on the side. This lemon chili combination is so India and so pan India. Just a tad of red to break the color. Nice. You know, uh, you could call it India on a plate or a plate full of love, whatever you call it. For me, this is real India because it's pure, it's beautiful and it's honest. And that's what our food and our recipes stand for. All you got to do is try the recipe and feel the purity and let me know how it came out. And do subscribe to stay connected. Thank you. See you soon.